Welcome back everyone to the next installment of Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water. We beat the prologue, we beat First Drop, which I'm going to have to go back to later and properly perform on, but now we can do the second drop, and the good news is I think I know how to menu. It said the main menu, so I figured it would be, you know, way out of the game, but no. In any case, second drop. Oh, select difficulty? I can only do easy or normal. It has been several days since the incident at the inn. Hisuga is out on the case. A young girl comes to the shop and finds a worried Yuri. Yuri is given a missing person case. Something Hisuka forbade. Yeah, you remember, don't follow spirit people. You might see something you'll wish you hadn't. Oh, by the way, how much shade is this game throwing at me? Easy mode. Want to enjoy the story? Normal. Who want to enjoy the game? <laughs> Anyway, find Fuyuhi Himino. I might have said that wrong. Fuyuhi? Fuyuhi? Himino? Ah. Yeah, I can, I can buy items at the beginning, which is pretty rad. So I can restore some health. Full. Removes wetness and taint. Sounds gross, but that'll be a status effect thing later in the game. Mirror Stone, a free revive. Better film. Better film. Better film. Man, I can easily see how I'd be spending a lot of points. Oh boy. But I do have a bunch of the Type 14. Now, the thing with this game is... I believe you start with the base set of items per chapter but you could buy more to start with, and I think you might even be able to accumulate some if you beat a chapter with high-level film or something. I don't think you could grind for it, but you might have a little degree of accumulation. However, if you keep using healing items and stuff like that, I think it negatively affects your grade. In any case, let's start the episode. Second drop, Mount Ikami, Yuri Kozukata. So we're still playing with her. A few days have passed since Yuri's introduction to Shadow Reading at the Abandoned Inn. Since then, Hisoka has gone off somewhere and hasn't returned. Yuri worries for Hisoka, but isn't sure how or where to start searching. As she sits waiting at the antique shop, a girl named Fuyuhi Himino shows up, claiming to have enlisted Hisoka to help her find a missing person. Antique and Cafe Kurosawa. Looking for Hisoka Kurosawa. Is she here? Oh, I'm sorry, but she stepped out. My name is Fuyuhi Himino. I've been waiting for her to tell me if, if she could help me find someone. I still haven't got a reply from her. You're looking for someone? She might have gone to the mountain, Mount Hikami. Mount Hikami. Someone told me that they saw my friend there. It's an infamous suicide spot, isn't it? I don't know why Haruka would go to a place like that. Haruka? Come on. And without even saying a word to me. Don't worry. As soon as Ahsoka gets back, I'll tell her. No, that's fine. I can't wait any longer. I'll go look for her myself. Huh? Come back! A missing person case? Hisuka left a few days ago and hasn't been back. Maybe this is what she's been working on. 
This ghost room is upstairs. Maybe she left some clues as to her whereabouts. This is like Fatal Frame 3. We have the non-dungeon level, you know, hub world, I guess. But I bet you this place gets infested with benign ghosts later. Oh, just immediately we're doing the math. Search Hisuka's room. I cannot take out the camera. I'm still nervous about standing here by myself as I've never been good at handling customers. I've only just learned how to make coffee, and I've never actually served a customer yet. The refrigerator is full of water, soft drinks, and a few beers. Alcohol isn't on the menu, but we sometimes serve it to the regulars. These drawers seem to be where the shop's receipts and financial records are kept. I have not taken a proper look through them yet. Oh good, I can still run. The cupboard is filled with cups that we don't use anymore. It's an antique clock on top of an old dresser. Hisuka has a thing for clocks. The shop is full of them. She said she finds them comforting. No way they'll be used as a scare later. It is kind of cool though how you can hear each different clock as you walk by. Can I not do anything with this middle table? This looks like it's full of stuff to chat. Oh! It's a big antique sofa. It's been here since I first came to the shop. I don't think it will sell, but Hisuka doesn't seem to mind. Okay. If there is a ghost, then I can't break out my camera. So there probably is not a ghost. A book about Mount Hikami was lying on the bookshelf. It seems to be about the traditions surrounding the mountain. The Deathly Mountain. Oh, good. Mount Hikami has long been feared to be haunted. In the past, it was said that sleeping with one's feet facing the mountain was taboo. Watching the sun set behind the mountain, too, was believed to invite forth beings from the netherworld. Today, the mountain is said to call those fascinated by death. Countless rumors abound of people spirited away to that accursed peak. They are said to venture to the mountain alone, leaving behind no trace of themselves. Some say the bodies of those who vanish can be found at the bottom of the Lake of the Departed on the mountain's summit. Oof. Since becoming a tourist destination, the prevalence of such frightening tales did seem to diminish for a while. Even so, despite its fleeting status as a tourist hotspot, Mount Akami is yet to shake its reputation as a cursed mountain, a place of death. Wouldn't it be has yet to shake? Whatever. Today, it has become a popular place at which to commit suicide. You know, here's the thing. I am still very irritated that Maiden of Blackwater never came out in physical form in America. It was digital, but we didn't get a physical version. But with all this focus on suicide, I think I kind of see why. Because parents can't accidentally grab this off the shelf for their kids and just see, like, suicide everywhere. <laughs> A book about Mount Akami? Yeah, oh, man. Suicide at Mount Akami. Can't wait to read. It seems to be about the rumors surrounding Mount Akami as a site of spiritual activity. How does a place became, become famed for suicide? As more people die, the place will gain a reputation, and people are drawn to these spots out of a desire not to be alone in the end. Interestingly, these suicide spots are rarely known as hotspots for spiritual activity. This is what makes Mount Akami distinct from the others. It has both a tradition of suicide and has long been associated with ghost sightings. Then there are the so-called Maidens of Black Water. It is said that if you are found by one of those maidens, they will lead you to your death. Those caught in the maiden's gaze never again leave the mountain, or so the rumors go. There are also tales of specters on Mount Akami who relive their own deaths. Those who do not die in accordance with local practices become cursed, forced to relive their final moments for eternity. I hope you had a clean death. Many of the people who have been kept from committing suicide on Mount Akami claim to have seen a maiden, or one of those looping specters. Looping? And it, oh, okay, looping the deaths. And felt a strong compulsion to kill themselves. 
Perhaps it is because of these stories of maidens and ghosts that the mountain continues to be a popular spot for those looking to take their own life. Hey, by the way, I don't know if this is a coincidence or what, but every note I've read so far has had four pages, and four, she, is Japanese for death. Again, coincidence? Maybe, but it's just interesting. Oh, right. Yeah, notes updated. I feel so stupid. B has not been useful yet, but if I have the camera out, then it should help me dodge an attack. X is the camera button, which I can't use right now because I don't have the camera, but the Y button. It was the freaking Y button the whole time. I'm, I'm pressing plus and minus, and it's the, it's the Y button. Don't I feel silly? So I can go to the map from here, so you actually can see the map. Not that I can move walls out, but this is what the map looks like. Items and records. There it is. New items, new token, so... No. Stop saying new. Why do they all say new? Back? Yeah, there it is. Looks cool. I like that you can actually see each type or each picture. That's kind of nice. And the mirror stone is not a mirror. Huh. Tokens. The the snapshots we got, like the plot things. Collection. So the, the notes. Camera obscura. Photo album. Yeah, see, four pages, four pages. It says at the bottom of the, the reading, four pages. No way. Oh, that's awesome. Can I... Okay. I can actually review cutscenes. That's fantastic. Notes. Photo mode. Four pages. Ah, three pages. Okay. <laughs> No, this is actually new information. Okay, about Yuri. A young girl with psychic abilities. After surviving a tragic accident, she's been able to see ghosts and visions of the past. Since that day, she has felt death calling to her. One day, she disappeared, and Hisoka was asked to find her. Hisoka found Yuri just as she was about to jump from a cliff. Yuri now stays with Hisoka at her antique shop. Yuri avoids other people, terrified of seeing into their souls. She helps around the shop, mostly by cleaning. She rarely deals with customers. She's always found it hard to ignore those in need, and her abilities only make things worse. The only time she feels free of her worries is when she cycles. Curious if they mention that. I wonder if that's actually going to be plot relevant. Traces or shadows, and you can see them. The traces attack malevolent ghosts? Oh, attract. Wow, that changes everything. <laughs> yeah, don't chase them or you might follow them into the world of the dead. Mm hmm. Tokens. They're used in shadow reading. You take a picture of the thing to find the other key item. Oh, no kidding. We get... We actually get recaps of uh, the chapters. So this is just what it said before. Shrine maidens. They were murdered and became ghosts. There's a story that they were killed and their bodies washed up in the pool of petrific... Not petrification. Wow. Purification. Now dead, they carry out their duties. Their dark gaze awakens suicidal thought. My god. You know, it's kind of funny because I played a ton of dark games, but... I just never see the subject of suicide discussed this much, so it's actually making me a little bit uncomfortable to read. Like, so much about, like, killing themselves, killing themselves, drawn to suicide. Like, I'm just not used to reading that ever in video games. I think I've seen it mentioned once ever, and that was, like, uh, like, like the words, at least, as opposed to the act, which was Disgaea 2, when a high-level printy just outright tells the player to kill themselves for looking up tutorials this late in the game. I couldn't believe that. The Netherworlds. The world of the dead, a place of never-ending night, permanent darkness, where the netherworld connects to the world of the living, the sky glows as if in the light of the setting sun. The light beckons those unfortunate enough to see it towards a darkness they will never escape. Wow. Okay, I'll work my way back up. Shadow reading we know about. See traces. People who could read it might be descendants of the Hikami Shrine Maidens. Ooh. Intriguing. Postmortem photography. Okay, the intention was to remember loved ones by taking pictures of their dead relatives in their finest clothes. And this was at a time where photographs were a luxury, so post-mortem allowed them to capture their beloved. 
uh, Dr. Kunihiko Aso with his camera obscura had been invited all over Japan to take such pictures, and most of them are on Mount Hikami. They were especially treasured by those living on and around the place, and they believe the camera captures the soul of a photographed person, preserving it unchanged for eternity. The camera itself exposed that which remains hidden. Several of these things exist, but as each was made as a prototype, their appearance and capabilities differ, which is pretty cool. Most are known and are broken. Yeah, most are broken now, and no one knows how to repair them. They're highly sought after by collectors, despite rumors of them being cursed. So, collectors either see that as a unique property and a risk worth taking, or discredit it as superstition. Just like Hisuka, there are people who use it for specialist work, but these people tend to already have the ability to see the ephemeral. And some say the broken cameras aren't broken at all, and the users do not have the ability to make them work. Yeah, my memory's hazy on this one, but weren't we able to use a broken camera in one of the previous games? It's been years. So Hisuka, owner of the antique store, developed psychic abilities by learning from local elders, researching the subject. One of the locals gave her a camera obscura, which she now looks for missing objects and people with. She stopped Yuri from jumping. I love how if you don't read about Yuri, it's like, what? Stop there from jumping? And brought the orphan girl back to her shop. She feels for Yuri, but she doesn't have the power she... Yeah, Hisuka doesn't have the power she does. She can only sense the ghosts, not see them. She tells fortunes as a hobby. She's become popular with the young students who frequent her cafe. It's a coffee. Her coffee is renowned for its taste, and Hisuka likes to say, Sometimes a cup of coffee can make all the difference. The mountain we know. 2,300 feet tall. It used to be a holy place for a now-dead religion. People alive would keep these old religious practices. Natural beauty, overflows of springs and vegetation. A company tried making it a tourist attraction, but the project was abandoned after a landslide. So, people thought it was a, a place that only the dead could enter, and even now it attracts those who wish to end their lives, and many believe that no tourist spot is cursed. The Hot Springs is an old inn on Mount Akami, refurbished into a hot spring resort. The manor was abandoned after the old building was lost in a massive landslide. The owner, after losing his family, committed suicide, and the inn is said to be haunted by ghosts of those who died there, including that of the innkeeper. And then finally, the antique shop. Old house renovated as an antique shop and cafe in the front hall. There was an antique shop there to begin with, but Heiska always wanted to be a cafe owner, so she redecorated. Relaxed atmosphere, attracting some regulars, a base for unusual shadow reading business, and another draw for certain customers is fortune telling, which Heiska does as a hobby. Hooray! All right. So yeah, photographs, the ghosts that I captured, a little loading for, oh no, we're, we're better now. Oh, that's really cool. And it gives you all this information. That's awesome. Go for the high score, people. You can save photos. And then finally, our ghost list. Man from the water. Got him. <laughs> all right. We're, we're, we're done. Now let's uh, actually look around the place. If there's anything to see. Right. I got to get used to that. Turning around, just press down, and then... Center your view. God, that, that, that door opening thing unnerves me every time. Actually, come to think of it, there were more places to check on this floor. Not that you could see it very well. Unless I go to the menu and then show you the map, but there are more places to check. This place looks pretty gorgeous. This room is usually used for storage, but it's been tidied up for use as a guest bedroom. I stayed in this room when I first came here. Now that I think about it, Hiska must keep it as a place the people she finds can stay in. Oh, the people she finds. Okay, because I was one of those people. Okay, a clock on top of the dresser, the face is worn and faded, and Hisuka really seems to like this clock. Sorry, I hesitated because I was wondering if it was the same message as before. Well, you know I'm getting spooked in this room at one point or another. Because why not? Oh, and there are more stairs? What? This is disorienting to me now, but I get the feeling I'm going to get used to this. Back door is locked. Just like Fatal Frame 3, I'm going to be able to navigate this place with no problem later on in the playthrough. The bathroom. A large bathtub, but too large for me to relax in easily. Uh, 
you know damn well we're not relaxing at all if there's a huge bathtub in the water is scary video game. How much you want to bet there's a scene where we do like a nightmare on Elm Street and start to sink into the water and then, oh no, ghost arms or whatever. Well, let's see if both staircases lead to the same place. I really hope they do for convenience's sake. And it looks like they do. You can't see it, but they do. Also, that's cool. I can look down from here. That way's where I want to go, but I'll check this door first. Again, there shouldn't be ghosts here, especially because it's the beginning of the game. Pretty kimono hangs on a rack. Yay! Nothing about this bed. Uh, open? What? Nothing of interest. That was odd. What bothers me is that I bet you, just like Fatal Frame 3, I'm going to have to check every single room every single time the plot puts me back here to see what's changed. Although I'm sure they'll make it interesting. Actually, can I... Oof. Camera. Yeah, I can check this. A small potted plantain lily sits on top of the low dresser. Cool. Okay, so there's out here. This is the destination, by the way. This is where I need to go. Two. Looks down to the courtyard. Yay. I think there's only one more room. Yeah, this is the other staircase. So now we're caught up. This is the only other room left in this entire building. So after this, we'll be able to check our destination. Not exactly the scariest installment, as this was just an information dump, but that's how it is when you establish. Huh. I didn't even press anything. I just did this. Hisako gave me this room when I moved in. It used to be her bedroom. It's been a while since I moved in, but I still haven't unpacked anything. So where does Hisuka sleep then? Hisuka put this desk here for me. It used to be her bedroom, but she freed it up for me to use. Strange that they mentioned it used to be her bedroom because I got that in an automatic message. You know, I should already know that by the time I check this desk. Hiska doesn't like it when I don't make my bed. <laughs> I'll do it later. Take that, Hiska. There are some baskets and file cases on top of the dresser. Hiska set them out for me, but I'm not sure what to do with them. Pile of cardboard boxes. Haven't touched them since I moved in. And I moved in three months ago. Nah, I don't know. Okay, now we can go to where we have to go. Finally. And here. The room with the big fat X on it. This is Hisko's room. She really likes the traditional Japanese style. Gee, I wonder what I should interact with her. So there's a note here. Old ja Oh boy. Japanese style full length mirror. I've never liked looking into mirrors. Normally I don't mind, but I always do mind in horror games. I'm waiting for it to wink at me or something. There's spooky radio. And spooky drawer, I guess. Nothing of interest. Okay, so I can look at this paper here. Oh, that's just the door out. Paper there. And something else there. Okay, well, we're checking both. Why not? Lost items. Looks like it's bound by string. Seems to be notes on Hiska's shadow reading cases. So lost item case files. Five pages. Hey. Client, no name. Missing item diary, token, photo of deceased, details, locate mother's diary. Client seeks info on their late mother, relates to a deceased individual, apply caution. Results, the caretaker of the deceased had burned the diary at her request. Hmm. Storeroom key. 
Photo of deceased. Locate the key. Item may already be lost. Token and item belong to deceased. Apply caution. Results. Item located. Had been hidden by client's patient. Return to the client. Yay! So you could tell these things were written in order. Like, she writes details, and then after she does the thing, writes the results. This was not all written at once. It couldn't have been. Diamond ring. Token is the ring's box. Client is seeking the engagement ring. Requested fiancé cannot be notified. Date of a wedding soon approaching. Found on the client's desk. In an obvious place, but somehow eluded the client. Album of post-mortem photographs. And this is from Ren Hojo. He's the guy who apparently hired Hisuka, the guy in the cutscene at the end of the previous installment. Token, the photograph. Details. Reference material for a book about traditional practice in Mount area. Bad location, but minimal danger anticipated. Client is an acquaintance. And hey, we did it. But where's the results? Hey. Found in an old building of abandoned inn. Shadow attempted to drag Yuri toward the netherworld. Should have gone alone. Must warn Yuri to stay away from the mountain. And a book next to this. The Art of Shadow Reading. Shadow Reading is the ability to read traces of the past. Not unlike the ability commonly known as psychometry. Did we... Is this the tutorial thing? We already read this, didn't we? Things the owner wished to be forgotten. Th that's, that's not a semicolon point, by the way. That's a comma point. Things whose owners have passed away, comma, things that no longer wish to be seen, comma, things drawn partway into the netherworld, invisible within our own. Such, well, oh. No, you know what? Because the last item required a comma to describe it, it looks like semicolons are required for the previous ones. Touche, fatal frame, you got me. Such items can be called back to the world of the living. Unlike these objects, however, people who have been spirited away must not be chased after lightly. In many such cases, they have been taken by the creatures of the netherworld who linger nearby. Utmost caution must always be applied. Okay. Oh cool, we actually have like... Properly working here, yay! A tobacco tray and an accessory case sit on top of a low chest of drawers. A tobacco tray is also being used as an accessory case. The accessory being tobacco. Ha 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 ha. I'm not getting static anymore. The bed's been tucked away behind the desk. This room used to be a study, and the bed was in another room. Hisuka moved the bed in here so I could take her room. So I guess this is Hisuka's room. Hisuka says that she prefers cozy quarters. I hope she's not just doing it for my sake. Open envelope. Fuyuhi Himuno. This must be your missing person request. Maybe I could provide some clues as to where Hisuka and Fuyuhi went. Dear Miss Kurosawa, or Ms, I guess, please find Haruka. She went missing over a week ago. You do still take on missing person cases, don't you? I've contacted the police, but they're no help. They say she was probably spirited away. Here, Haruka wouldn't have gone anywhere without telling me. I'm certain something bad has happened. I can handle my own grief, but I can't stand the thought of her suffering somewhere. What if she's waiting for me to find her? I'm worried sick. Haruka is still alive. I know it. But something has to be done, and quick, Lee. Remember when you found that precious picture of me and Haruka? I was so happy to have it. Now I need your help once again. Hey. It shows me looking shy and another girl. They look close. Ahsoka. She must have gone to Mount Hikami to look for this girl. Mount Hikami, a place where many come to take their lives. I'm positive that Fuyuhi must have come here. Move over, Zelda. This is the real Death Mountain. <laughs> Great. Back in the hot springs. Also, I love the way it shows that location with like the black kind of look, almost ink looking movement. Mount Hikami. Fuyuhi is somewhere on this mountain. I should be able to use this picture of her to find her trace. Hold down ZR to find the trail. That is so cool. Notes updated. Again, yeah, there we go. New tokens. We got the two schoolgirls. They're smiling, but also look somehow lonely. We got a new collection. Oh, of course. Sorry, this is me being neurotic. 
All right, fine. Notes. There we are. After coming to Hizuka for help, she went to look for her friend Haruka Momose, Momose? on Mount Hikami by herself. Fuihi was one of Hisuka's regulars. Not in the cafe, but for fortune telling. She hasn't come lately, so Yuri doesn't know her. Hisuka did not accept the case right away, but asked for some time to think about it. Growing impatient, Fuihi visited the shop. And I think that's it, right? Okay. Looks like things are going to get real spooky real soon, but for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? Kind of. As far as actual story went, we barely got anywhere, but as far as lore is concerned, and exploration, we got a lot done. We took a look at the entire cafe slash house that we appear to live and work in, so we got our settings established. We also looked up characters, gameplay mechanics, and objects, and various things in this Fatal Frame meeting of Blackwater universe, and then finally... We set off to find Fuyuhi and this missing person. Of course, the game heavily telegraphed that that's a bad idea, looking for missing ghosts. Missing objects is one thing, but a missing spirit? That could be a problem. And guess what? This is a horror video game. I get the feeling things are going to go south pretty quickly. Until next time, everyone.